Well, thank you for taking some time to take a look at the Windward Studio solution. I'll step through a few slides, some template samples, and then we'll take a look at the product more in depth. Just a few of our satisfied customers who use Windward every day to assemble documents, reports, using our software or solution. As a high-level overview, we're going to take a look at the designer solution. We'll view some sample templates and how to generate output from those samples. And then I'm also going to explain and even create a template using pods. Publish on demand or portable docklets is one of our clients' favorite features that allows you to quickly create and update new templates. And I'll also answer any questions you might have along the way. Feel free to stop me. Our solution is made up of two components, and the first one is the designer. The designer is simply a Microsoft Office plugin, and it allows your users to create Word, Excel, and PowerPoint files for your document templates. And the beautiful thing about that is everyone already knows Microsoft Office applications, so just about anyone can design and even test your document templates before they're ready to go live in production. And that's where our second piece comes in, which we call the engine. The engine is just basically a set of code libraries that your development team references in your application and when you're ready to generate output from the document templates you created in Office. We can do that in pretty much any output format you desire. DOCX, XLS, PowerPoint, PDF, HTML, straight to printer, whatever your requirement might be. So again, briefly, the desktop tool is an add-in to Office that lets me create Word, Excel, and PowerPoint files that are linked directly to my data. And when I'm happy with the output that template generates, that's when it's time to share with a larger audience by embedding this in your application. And with just a few lines of code, when you call the Windward Engine, you specify the template you want, the data you want to consume, and the output form format that you want returned. Everything else is maintained in the template. So once you've embedded this in your application, you're just managing an Office document for moving forward. It's real easy to open those up, make some edits, and save it back without ever having to recompile or republish your app. So what I'd like to do next is take a look at some of the sample templates that ship with our product. This is the add-in you see here at the top of your screen. Windward and Windward Tools. You'll note that all the icons are kind of grouped by their purpose. And we have redirects to our website or wiki, places to update the license or see what version we're running, global options. For the most part, you'll do all your work here on the Windward ribbon. I'm just going to briefly describe this going from left to right. Data sources is usually the first thing you do when you create a template is you connect to a data source. When we're just capable of connecting to multiple data sources simultaneously, and if the disparate data sources share a field in common, I can even relate those inside the template. The data bin allows me to explore the data source directly and view the objects there at the data source. The pod bin I'm going to demonstrate in the next template sample. Input parameters is how I would create runtime variables like customer ID or starter end dates that you might use to build the results of your report. The tag tree has got to be one of my favorite tools that allows me to come over and take a look at the organization of tags within my template. I can tell by the icons here what type of tag they are, for each, a query, a set, an out tag, just by the look of the icon next to the label. And by clicking on them, I can quickly navigate to any tag in my template, learn and see the properties and the actual value held in the query window. Very helpful in debugging and, and uh, working with your template. Love the tag tree. From there, these are the tags you'll use to create just about anything your mind's eye can imagine. Again, I'll briefly describe each. The out tags are the tags you see here on the screen, the blue tags. They actually generate output from the generated output. Import tags are used to bring in images or signatures or other documents you want to be a part of the output. The set tag allows me to create a variable I can refer to throughout the context of the template. Then I've got a row of for each and query tags 
They don't actually output anything in the generated output, but they will hold the record or record set I'm working with. So if my query returns a single record, I'll use a query record, a uh, query tag. If my query returns two or more records, I'm going to want to use a for each and in for each tag, and everything between these two tags will repeat for each record in the record set. Then I've got two rows of conditional formatting tags, the if, else, end if, and switch case logic that allow me to set up a test condition. And if it evaluates true, the content following the if tag is displayed. Otherwise, the content following the else tag is displayed. We have an implementation of switch case logic here in the template where we evaluate risk, risk level. And based on that test condition, you'll bring in your own image and text. So above and beyond the charts and graphs already supported in Office, you'll bring in images to really punch up the look and feel of your output. I have link tags that allow me to create hyperlinks in my output, bookmark tags that are helpful in really large output, and then chart tags like the one you see here where we feed data directly to the chart tag. No need to extract that data into my document and then highlight ranges to create a chart. I can feed the data directly to the chart tag and then use tools that I'm already familiar with in Office to further stylize my chart. This template has a variety of data elements in it. You can see here it's an investment fact sheet. At the top of the document, I have objective, strategy, and risk. It's all going to be paragraphs of data. Get some tabular data here on past year's performance. I've got a growth area chart here as well as an asset allocation chart here at the bottom. And then, of course, some additional visuals into the template. And as you design, the designer will use it to output right here on the ribbon. So we can see that the content we're creating is what we, what we desire and what we hope to achieve with the completed template. And I want to place the output side by side with the template used to create it. And I'll size these appropriately. And what you'll notice is that the template on the left is drawn three separate times for each set of records that are retrieved by the query. And so in this case, I have a conditional formatting in the ribbon, low risk fund. You'll notice all the data is dynamic as I page break on change of fund and basically redraw this template with new data. You can build really attractive customer-facing documents using WinWork. Now I'd like to take you to another template sample. So I'll minimize these documents and open up this template here, basically an insurance form. When you're creating templates or as you're designing in the designer, you may feel that some of the content you create is reusable or are usable in templates that I create tomorrow or the next day. Examples might be the footer or this header, perhaps this signature block or, or perhaps this address block at the top of the document. If you ever create content that you feel is reusable, you can highlight it as I've done here on the screen and save it off as a pod or a template building block, if you will. It allows you to quickly add this content to any new template you create in the future. First, I'm going to show you that this is a working template by generating output. And again, I'll put the generated output side by side with the template used to create it. And I'll try to size these. What you'll notice is that where the import of the logo happened, I imported the correct logo. Here where the signature is supposed to come in, we have a signature in the output. And everywhere you see these blue out tags has been replaced with data from the data source. Now what I'd like to do is reproduce this template from scratch uh, using pause. So you'll notice this is a blank document. When I go to the Windward ribbon, you'll see the data bins grayed out, not connected to anything. But I can load my pod bin. It can have one or multiple pod files loaded each of which can have multiple components. One example would be a data source connection. I've already successfully connected to the data source once. There's no need to reproduce that effort. With a quick double click, I'm connected to my data source and I'm exploring objects. Quick and easy. I have the ability to explore things here in the Windward data bin. I have that drag and drop capability that's so popular where you can pick and choose the columns you want to see and even rearrange the order of those columns to create a dynamic table. 
but I'm going to demonstrate the pods. The purpose of this demo is the pods. I'll start by clicking into the header, and I'm going to add this header content. Then I'll jump to the footer and do the same for the footer. And then from there, I simply position my cursor where I want the content of the pod to come into my template. And in a matter of a few mouse clicks, you'll notice that I've been able to reproduce this template. I can come in and modify the template to any way I see fit or leave it as is. It's completely up to you. But since this is a brand new document, the first time I try to generate output, it's going to ask me to save this file somewhere. So when I'm prompted, I'll simply find a location on my hard drive to save the new file. And you'll notice that just like that, I was able to reproduce this template. Another quick and easy tool to allow designers to quickly create content their customers desire and make it available to them rather quickly. Lastly, I want to take a look at a tool here on the ribbon called Generate Code. Once you've completed a template, you can hit the Generate Code button to see what one of our various engines, what the code would look like. On this first tab here, we see the C-sharp code needed to generate this template if it were to execute on the on-click event of a button in your, your UI. The input stream here is the template. The output stream is the document you're going to create. This line right here controls the format. Report PDF for PDF, report docx for Word, report HTML for HTML, and the like. And then, of course, what data you want to consume. That's it. You'll notice it's very similar here in the Java example. Again, the input stream is the template, the output stream, the document you're going to create. This line controls the format that's returned. And then, of course, the data you want to consume. And then, of course, we have our third engine, the RESTful web service version of our engine that we use for all other languages. And we have various clients that you can click through and take a look at here. So in every case, we've got a tool that allows end users to quickly create content in an unrestricted, familiar environment of Office. And then, with just a few lines of code, embed this into any application. It is an enormous time saver for both end users and developers, and that developers don't have to be interrupted for every formatting or change to a report or document. And end users are very satisfied with the ability to go in and self-serve their needs. If you have any additional questions, feel free to send an email to sales at windwardstudios.com. I assure you, you'll get a response really quickly from our sales team. Thank you for your time and attention. And look around the website for additional details. More information is available on our wiki. Thank you.